All right, folks, I know you're dying to get the range test results for the diversity module testing. And I think there would probably be a riot if I made you wait until I did a feature overview and a menu overview of every single one of them before I showed you the range test results. So I'm doing, I'm just going to release this results. Um, I have right now tested the LaForge, the True D, the real ACC, and the original NextWave module that, that I got with the goggles, just the regular NextWave module, not the diversity one. I have coming in the mail, at least I think I do. It, it's been a while and it hasn't come. Maybe I should follow up on that. I have the two pineapples coming in the mail. I really do think that one deserves a fair shot against these other ones and to see how it stacks up. But since it hasn't come in the mail, I'm going to put that in a separate video. And I'm going to show you what I got with these ones right here. Let me tell you about the equipment I'm using in this test. So first of all, on the diversity modules, I am using the standard Lumineer uh, 8 dBi mini patch antenna. And this is a Foxeer uh, 5.8 gigahertz circular polarized antenna. Now we could debate the merits of that antenna. It's certainly not a top end antenna like a TBS Triumph or something like that. Uh, but they all it's all the same as gear. So it's just, it's apples to apples, right? Uh, and in fact, in some sense, using a worse antenna actually makes the test results more valid because it means we'll see breakup and bad signal coming sooner and we'll really test the ability of the receiver modules themselves to uh, to pull in the signal. On the copter, I have the exact same antenna and I have a TS582332 channel 200 milliwatt video transmitter. Again, not a top of the line video transmitter, but it's the same for all the tests. So, you know, it's apples to apples and that's what really matters. Here we are looking at a satellite image of my lovely home. And I do that because when I show you where I flew, when I show you the first person view of me flying, I want you to understand where I am. And as much as you might watch me fly FPV around my house, you might not have a perspective really on where everything is and why I did what I did. So first of all, I am standing in the tests right here. Okay, that's where I typically stand when I fly. And I want you to know that I stood so that the patch antenna was facing right at the barn. And the reason I did that is because flying behind the barn is usually the area where I get the most breakup. So as I fly through these trees right here, that's where I tend to get the most breakup. And the reason is number one, the distance has gotten high. And number two, I'm flying behind the barn. If we zoom out a little bit, I also want to call your attention to this little area up here. During the flight test, you'll see that I fly into this area and I just do some circles for a little while. And if you look at the path here, again, bear in mind that the patch antenna is facing this way. So I am almost certainly outside the, the beam width of the patch. So I'm probably diversity crossed over onto the regular cloverleaf antenna at that point. And the distance there is, let's just check the distance real quick. Distance there is about 200 feet. Apologies to those who use the metric system. It's about 200 feet. And I just, and you've got these stand of trees here so, and, and you've got the house. So you're going through the house, you're going through these trees. You're actually going uphill. This is actually about a 10 foot tall uh, brick wall. Uh, and there's a, it, it is excavated here to make room for the patio. So there's quite a lot of obstruction. And this is probably one of the weakest areas I can possibly fly in. Uh, anywhere on the property. And that's, of course, why I picked it. I also did a test where I fly down. Thanks to the magic of 3D, I can show you. Isn't that freaking cool? I fly down into this area here, this excavated sort of dugout area. And I do that because this is a, a, a concrete retaining wall. And if I fly down into this corner here, you can see that if I'm standing right here, that's a really bad area for RF reception. And maybe I'm getting a reflected signal off of this wall. Who knows? But if I'm standing here and I'm just tucked my copter down into this area here, it's that if you can get a signal there, that really says something. You're certainly not getting a signal through all this earth or the earth is definitely absorbing the signal. Anything you're getting is reflected and, and probably really challenging environment. So I did some little circles down in that area as well. Those are the main tests that I performed. Now let's take a look at the results and see how each of the modules did. So we're going to start with this line behind the barn and I'm going to show you each of the modules one after the other and then all on the same screen and you can compare them. I'm not telling you which module is which. I'm just going to number them. I'll keep the numbering consistent throughout the testing. You can make your own notes about what you notice about each one. Pick your favorite and then at the very end, don't jump to the end to find out. At the very end, 
you'll be able to find out which one you thought was best. See, that's science, isn't that great? The exception to that is, as you'll see in a minute, the Clearview module, which is number five. And the reason I'm telling you that is twofold. Number one, the way the Clearview module breaks up is so different from the others because it's not doing diversity. I thought it would be pretty obvious that it was the Clearview. And the other is that it has an OSD at the top of the screen and I forgot I forgot to turn the OSD off. So I didn't wanna rerun the testing. So you know which one's the Clearview. For the screen that's coming up where I show you all of them at once, I have time stretched them so that they are the same duration. So you should be seeing about the same location at about the same time. Not exactly, because I'm not a robot. There you go. Now we come to the top of the hill testing. That's what I call it anyway. It's this area up at the corner of my property, which is behind all the trees and behind the house and up the 10 foot brick wall and so forth and so forth. Basically the worst place I could find on my property for video reception. And I do some circles here. Again, I'm not robotically precise about exact location and altitude, but I just do some meandering circles in the area. You can decide for yourself how you think it looks. As you watch this, I do want to point out to you that the subjective experience I remember from flying, and I've noticed this before, not just in this testing, is that the DVR playback looks worse than what I remember seeing in the goggles these big white slashes across the screen. They, I see those glitches while I'm flying, but they are much less pronounced and much less disruptive. Since all these devices are being recorded on by the exact same DVR, it's still an apples to apples comparison. But if you're watching this and going, wow, that looks a lot worse than what I see when I fly at my house. Yeah, well, it looks a lot worse than what I see when I fly at my house too. I don't know why the DVR seems to look worse. Uh, it's, it's true for every DVR I've used. And maybe it's just my brain sort of filters out the, filters it out or something. All right, folks, that's gonna bring us to the end of this video, but this is not the end of the testing. Uh, number one, I'm gonna give you the raw video, the raw flight video from all of those tests that you just watched. 
So I extracted what I thought were the most interesting parts, but if you want to watch the whole flight, you can. And number two, I did some range testing where I just flew in a straight line as far away as I could get. Well, you'll see. It's not exactly a straight line. You'll see. I flew as far away as I could get, and then I turned around and came back. And um, and I don't have a problem telling you which module is which for that testing because I think the results are a little less subjective there. Whereas here, there, did you have a hard time figuring out like which was best? Like I like some of them really stood out to me as better, and some stood out as worse. But it was pretty close for a lot of them, and so I'm not I'm not going to taint your opinion with my opinion. I'm going to give you my opinion in a, a, another video, of course. I'm gonna milk this. I've done I've done a lot of work on this testing. I'm going to milk it for a couple of videos. I hope you'll I hope you'll forgive me that. But um, yeah, if you're not sure yet, if you haven't formed your opinion, stop, pause the video, go back, watch it some more, mute it so you don't have to listen to me talk through the whole thing. But go back and watch it some more. I found that until I'd sort of watched it a couple times and let my eyes glazed over that I didn't really have a figure out which ones I thought were better. Um, so once you've decided, come back here and I'm about to tell you which module is which. Are you ready? This is your last chance. Here we go. Number one is next wave. That's the non-diversity next wave. And in case you're wondering, I had a cloverleaf antenna on the next wave module for this testing. It did not have the advantage of the patch antenna because it, it can only do one antenna at a time. And I was like, well, clearly you're going to fly that with a clover leaf. So number one was the next wave. Number two was the LaForge. Number three was the Furious FPV True D. Number four was the Real ACC. And of course, as you knew, number five was the Clearview. Now that you know which was which, uh, to go down to the comments, let me know what you thought. Uh, did any of them stand out as particularly good or particularly bad? Uh, did, did you think you saw the number one doing diversity switching? Were you looking at it and going, oh yeah, that one's doing a lot of diversity switching. Number one was the next wave. It's not doing diversity. So uh, if you thought you saw diversity switching on number one, uh, you should recheck your assumptions. Okay. What did you think of the clear view? It's pretty different, isn't it? Go watch, definitely go watch the whole Clearview flight, even the raw video, even if you're not going to watch any of the others. Definitely go check that one out. It has a really different way of, it, that it breaks up when it gets at the edge of its range. But but is its range really better? We're going to do a range test on the next video and check it out. Uh, anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I I hope this was really educational. I hope it helps you decide which of these to go with. Uh, but um, remember, range isn't everything. Price and features also factor in. So watch the other videos if you want to see how that stacks up. And as always, happy flying.